What's up, sports fans, and welcome to the Sports Opinions Podcast. We're doing something a little different this week, something special. I'm your host, Alex Cuesta. Find me on Twitter at A underscore Cuesta 30. And, of course, find the Sports Opinions Twitter at Sports Opinion 30. This week, we're going to do something a little different, start something new. Every Wednesday, I'm going to give a weekly New York sports update. Now, I'm a big uh, listener of talk radio, specifically sports talk radio. I listen to WFAN, try to listen to ESPN New York, but I don't really have great reception over in Poughkeepsie. But um, I'm doing this because on those two networks, they do cover New York sports, but it really seems like they only cover a few of the teams, you know, basically Yankees, Mets, Jets, Giants, Rangers, Knicks, and a lot of the other teams in the area don't get much love. They might get a mention here or there on a sports update, but no real commentary about how they're doing, what they're doing. So when I feel like, you know, there's fans of all the New York teams, teams in Buffalo, teams, uh, you know, the Devils in New Jersey and other New York sports teams that need to get some coverage. So here I am going to do something that hopefully everyone likes. And if I get a pretty decent reception about it, then um, I'll continue to do it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to talk about um, each of the New York sports teams, going to give you a rundown of how they did over the last week from last Wednesday to this Tuesday, and um, talk about how they did, if they didn't have any games, really just talk about any news about them, and, you know, here we go. So first we're going to talk MLB. It was opening week. Baseball was back. And it was back in a big way in New York, uh, starting off with the Yankees. Yankees had a great start to the year, whomping Toronto 6-1. to one. Uh, They had another win, but they've cooled down a little since then. They had two controversial losses, recovered yesterday nicely with the win. They're 3-2 and two on the start, and they've been playing pretty well. Giancarlo Stanton has, was as good at advertising in the first game, had a pretty decent... Um, you know, first two games struggled mightily, mightily uh, last game with five strikeouts, but has been playing well overall. It's really early, so you can't really tell, but Luis Severino looked like an ace in his first um, game. Masahiro Tanaka looked really good. Sonny Gray struggled, but uh, overall, it's early. Don't really know what it is, but three and two to start for the Yanks. Um, upcoming next week, they finish uh, their Tampa Bay series that they're playing today. They have Baltimore in there, a four-game series, and they start a series against the Boston Red Sox, who most believe will be competing with the Yankees for the top of the AL East. They're the defending AL East champions, so that's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, moving on, we have the Mets, obviously, the other New York uh, baseball team, but they might not be the other team this year if this start is any indication of how they're going to play. Gotten off to a nice hot start, 3-1. and one. Um, Syndergaard and DeGrom looked really good in their starts. Harvey had a good start. Matt struggled, but I'm not ready to call it quits on him just yet. Kid has great stuff. He really just needs to get it together and do it more consistently. So they started off 3-1 and one over the past week. Um, and, you know, look really good. They hit the ball really well. Todd Frazier has been hitting the ball really well, particularly. Um, and they've gotten some good production from that lineup, more than I think a lot of people thought. Uh, for the rest of the week, they're um, going to finish up their series against Philadelphia, the Phillies. They're going to play the Nationals in a series there. And then they're going to start a series against the Marlins. The Nationals one's going to be interesting because the Mets are trying to catch them. That's the team to beat in the NL East right now and if the Mets can go in playing really well who knows how they're going to go there I know it's really early but it's a nice measuring stick game as much as it really doesn't matter because it's April it's just nice to see if the Mets are going to be competitive and the Miami Marlins are a team you have to beat if you're the Mets in this situation both teams um, had a postponed game uh, two days ago on the second the Mets and Yankees both had to postpone due to weather. Lots of snow on the ground early in the morning, so they pushed back each of their games, which, you know, is kind of interesting that we had snow in April. But going to a sport that's not affected by snow at all, the NBA, 
talking about the New York Knicks early. They're winding down their season, both the Knicks and the Nets, the seasons that mercifully are going to wind down for both teams. The Knicks were 0-3 over the last week, losing to Philadelphia, Detroit, and Orlando, um, dropping the 27-51 overall. This upcoming week, they have the Miami Heat, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Cleveland Cavs, three games that they're probably going to lose again. Um, Seasons winding down can't come to end quick enough for them or the next team I'm talking about, the Brooklyn Nets. They were 2-2 two and two over the last week playing more competitive ball. They played pretty competitive ball all week, but they're still not a good team. Uh, they started off with a win against Orlando, a win against Miami in overtime. Then they lost two straight against Detroit and just got walloped by the Philadelphia 76ers. Their upcoming games, they play the Bucks, they play Chicago twice, and that'll get us into next week to next Wednesday. Both of these teams have struggled this year. Um, the Nets weren't in tank mode because they don't have control of their own pick. That goes to Cleveland. The Knicks are in complete and total tank mode, and it shows, especially in this last loss against Orlando, 97-73. to 73. They put up 73 points. Going to be a lot of question marks going into the offseason for the Knicks. Who they keep, who they don't, how long is it going to take for Chris Dapps and Porzingis to get healthy? Uh, what are they going to do in the draft? Are they going to keep Beasley? Are they going to keep Ennis Cantor? All these questions are really looming over their head. Have they ever found the point guard? Do they believe in Frank? Is Emmanuel Moutier just a complete and total bust? Are they going to give up on him? It's Trey Burke showing you enough that you can keep him around. These are all questions that the Knicks really have to answer, and they can't wait for this season to be done. As for the Nets, they saw a lot of young talent. A lot of competitive guys. Um, D'Angelo Russell has been coming into his own as he's coming back from injury. Uh, Rondé Hollis Jefferson has shown that he could be a really good player. Karis LeVert is getting better and better every single game. Spencer Dinwiddie has been playing really well. He's kind of been relegated to the bench, but when he plays meaningful minutes, he's good. Um, Biggest surprise of the year, Jared Allen coming in, rookie center. Just coming in, he's a high flyer. Everyone knew he could dunk. Everyone knew he could play defense. Nobody, and I mean nobody, thought that he was going to be pulling down double-doubles and that he was going to be playing as well as he's been playing. So the Nets have something to build on. They need to really get another really smart draft pick like Sean Marks has been getting, and they need to become more attractive to free agents and hopefully land a real star. That's the goal, land a star. So that's the NBA. Moving on to the NHL. The New York Rangers, uh, another New York team that's tanking. They're out of contention. They've really sold off a lot of their talent. Over the past week, they were 1-3. and three. They're at 34-37-9 with 78 points, trying to dive down as low as they can in the rankings to get a nice draft pick. Um, over the week, they lost to Washington. They lost to Tampa Bay. They beat Carolina, but then they lost to New Jersey. And they're just in a real way that they need to finish the season and they need to get on with the draft. They need to get on with uh, the offseason, and they really need to focus on the rebuild. Moving on to a team that is looking right at the playoffs in the face. They actually, I believe they clinched um, over in their last game. The Devils, who were three three wins, um, zero losses, and one loss in a tie, overtime loss this week. They're sitting at 43-28-9. They had that overtime loss to Pittsburgh early um, in the week. Then they beat the Islanders, beat the Canadians, and beat the Rangers. Playing playing the best hockey of the year right now. Um, Taylor Hall has been an absolute beast. The young talent of the Devils is really showing, really stepping up. They finish off the season with Toronto and Washington. Oh, the Rangers finish off the season with the Islanders and the Flyers. Hopefully they could play spoiler to the Flyers, keep them out of the playoffs. That would help the Devils. But the Devils have the Maple Leafs. They have the Capitals to finish the season. They need to finish strong. I know that they're in the playoffs, but they they can't give away any any games right now. None. They need to win out. They need to get momentum. And they really need to um, head into the playoffs with a head of steam. Moving on, the New York Islanders, another team that's, you know, they just can't wait for the season to be over. They're at 33, 37, and 10. 76 points on the year. They went um, one win, two losses this week. And it just hasn't been good this year. They lost to Toronto. They lost to the Devils. But they surprisingly beat the Flyers, which did help the Devils. Um, 
They have John Tavares. That's looming over their heads, whether or not he's going to stay, whether or not he's going to go. They need to do something. You can't lose a guy like John Tavares. John Tavares is a legitimate superstar, one of the most underrated superstars in the league. You got to hold on to that guy, but you got to build around him. They're moving back to Long Island shortly. They need to do something. They need to get their act together. The Islanders need to figure it out because there's a lot of passionate fans for the Islanders that are just getting screwed. Upcoming week, they play the Rangers, and they finish off with the Detroit Red Wings end their season, get to back to the drawing board. Speaking of a team that seems to be on the drawing board every single season, the Buffalo Sabres, hapless again this year, 25-42-12, and 12, 62 points, uh, one win, two losses over the past week, lost to Detroit, beat Nashville, lost to the Leafs. Uh, well, there's nothing really to say about the Sabres. They need to really get it together as a franchise. Buffalo, another place, has a lot of passionate fans. Uh, it's just sad to see what's going on over there. They finished the season playing the Senators, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, who, Jesus Christ, Tampa Bay is a good team, and the Panthers, who are also a really good team. Can't see the Sabres coming out too well. Season can't end quick enough for them. Seem to be saying that a lot for New York sports teams, but sadly is true for our winter sports. Moving on to the MLS, to soccer. Yes, soccer. Nobody talks about soccer on the sports. I'm going to talk about them here. The Red Bulls, uh, only game this week, over the past weekend on Saturday, a loss to Orlando City, 3-4. to um, They're 2-0-2 two two this year, two wins, zero, uh, two wins, zero ties, two losses. They only have six points on the table, 0-1 last week. But they might be looking forward a little bit. They have a Champions League semifinal round games coming up this week against Guadalajara. They play them uh, today, actually, and then on the 10th. So they might be looking forward a little bit. Um, in terms of the MLS over the Champions League. They're trying to make a mark, trying to get to the finals in the CONCACAF Champions League, which would be nice for the Red Bulls. Hopefully, it would be really good if we could see an MLS team win that. And I'm a Red Bulls fan, so I'd love to see it. Um, next team, a team that's you know taken by New York by storm, NYCFC. Their only game of the week on this Saturday was a win against uh, the, San Ho- the San Jose. They beat them 2-1. to one. Uh, they have 13 points on the table, 4-1 and one this year, and they're just playing really well. Good soccer, and they're a team that, you know, we, they have some one of the best rosters in the league. They can go, they can win an MLS Cup without a doubt. Um, they don't have any games upcoming this week, uh, but we look forward to them coming back. And, again, really good soccer team. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if they qualify for a CONCACAF Champions League as well soon, and they end up taking it to the CONCACAF. They're a really good team, some good talent on that team. Moving on to the NFL, uh, you know, even though there's no games going on, there's always news in the NFL. First, talk about the New York football giants. Uh, They had a lot to do in free agency. They didn't address the line very well. There's questions everywhere. They have the number two pick in the draft, but the story of the week is, are they going to trade Odell Beckham Jr.? Owner uh, John Mara came out and said he was tired of talking about Odell Beckham Jr.'s things off the field, nobody was safe, and then the rumors started to swirl, and then came out a report that the Giants are looking for two first-rounders for Odell Beckham Jr. This would be a freaking mistake. Two first-rounders, and oh, and a big story, the Patriots just made a trade for Brandon with Brandon Cook, sending him to the Rams to get a first-rounder. They now have two. They have the 23rd and the 31st, and now the rumors are swirling that the Patriots are going to try and go after Odell Beckham. If you're the Giants, why the hell would you want the 23rd and the 31st pick in the first round, even if you have the second? I would not trade Odell Beckham for three unknown quantities at all. I know Shaquan Barkley sitting there at the draft. A lot of people want him at two. He's a quote-unquote can't miss. Newsflash, everyone, there's no such thing as a can't miss in the draft. Ron Dane was a can't miss, and look at how that turned out. If you're too young to remember him, look up his college record and his college years and then look at what he did in the NFL. There is no such thing as a can't miss. Odell Beckham's a proven commodity. He's a generational type of guy. The only way I would trade is if I'm getting another one of those generational guys. And really, you have Tom Brady's not coming to the, to the Giants. Aaron Rodgers ain't coming to the Giants. Uh, um, what you gonna call it? Um, Le'Veon Bell isn't coming to the Giants. Do you want uh, what you gonna call it? Brown from the Steelers? Again, he's another guy who's kind of a baby. He's a diva. He's a prima donna. Wide receivers are prima donnas. I don't know why this is a newsflash. Keep Odell Beckham Jr. Don't trade him. Giants fans, stop clamoring for the trade. It's just ridiculous. 
Moving on to the New York Jets. Uh, Jets have been busy. Mike McCagnan had a lot of money to play with. Fans wanted to see him spend money. He spent money. He went after Kirk Cousins, missed him. Got Isaiah Crowell in the backfield. Added Thomas Rolls over this past week and center Travis Swanson from the Lions. That's big news. The backfield seems complete after losing Matt Forte now. They return Elijah McGuire, Bilal Powell. They pick up Isaiah Crowell, and now they pick up Thomas Rawls. That is a fearsome foursome back there, and that should really bolster the team. Great news also for the Jets. Wide receiver Robbie Anderson had a breakout year last year who was pulled over at the story with him cursing off a cop saying some pretty lewd things. No felony charges for him. That's huge. That means that if he is suspended, it might be very limited. It's not going to be as bad. No jail time at all. He's facing misdemeanor reckless driving, but that's a slap on the hand compared to what could have been. On to the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills, the news there, they're still trying to trade up. As all, all things uh, shown, they're still trying to trade up, get up into the top four at least, snag one of these big four quarterbacks. Right now, they're stuck with A.J. McCarron and uh, Nathan Peterman, and we all saw what Nathan Peterman did last year. McCarron's unproven. He could be really good. He could not be really good. Who knows? They need to get up. They need to get a draft pick, and they're working to do so. So with that, that was this week's Weekly New York Sports Update brought to you um, by Sports Opinions Podcast over here with me, your host, Alex Cuesta. Hope everyone liked it. Um, I hope it's something that I can bring to you weekly and that it covers a good enough base of the New York sports that people want to hear. You can find me on Twitter at A underscore Cuesta 30. As always, find Sports Opinions on Twitter at Sports Opinion 30. Thank you for listening. Hope you really enjoyed it. Have a good one.